On this channel, I've reviewed over 10 electric vehicle chargers and consulted for many more brands that are looking to enter the home charging market. And today's video, I'm going to tell you the five features that I think that you need on your electric vehicle charger. Now, when you buy an electric vehicle, it seems to be your first purchase towards being greener. And I tell you that now because the next thing you'll look at is having solar fitted. And it's very important that you look at your EV charger and make sure it can handle solar export from your solar. And what I mean by that is if you're generating extra solar, you don't really want to export it back to the grid at, you know, minuscule amounts of money. You're better putting that excess solar straight into your EV battery. And some EV chargers are capable of making sure that you can divert that extra load without pulling any extra load from the grid. Also check that some of them can't handle when you have a battery system attached to it as well and may end up draining the electric battery that you've got fitted to your house with your solar. So some of them work with the battery and the solar and the inverter all at the same time. If you're interested in learning a bit more about solar, batteries, inverters, I've got a series reviewing all those things coming on this channel soon. So make sure you click that bell notification button not to miss those videos. You may not be thinking about solar, but you will be looking at what the cheapest energy deal you can get for your electric car. There's a list over at evnick.com forward slash energy of all the cheapest EV deals I can find for your electric car. But when you get your electric car, you want to make sure that your charger can handle everything that you need it to do. Now, every EV charger handles scheduling. That's absolutely fine. But there is some more adaptive tariffs. There is Octopus Agile that changes every half an hour and some EV chargers just can't handle that. There's also Octopus Intelligent and you can only do that on selected EVs and some very small selected EV chargers. So make sure whichever tariff you're going on that the EV charger you're getting can handle these are really clever adaptive deals. Charge points are not cheap, so make sure that you are buying a charge point that's got longevity and is gonna last. What you don't wanna do is buy the absolute cheapest charge point you can get your hands on, uh, you know, a bit of a poor quality build charge point, and then two, three years down the line, you're ripping it out and replacing it. It's a false economy. Try and get a really well-built charge point. Look at the reviews I've done on all the charge points that I've reviewed so far and have a look at what I've said about how well-built they are, the quality, and, and it gives you a better idea if that charge point is going to still work in a number of years. Now, ask your installer. Your installer will only be able to tell you short-term reliability. Long-term reliability is not something that we fully know about any charge point really, because most companies haven't been around that long, but there is a couple of charge point companies that have been around for a bit longer. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are more reliable charge points. There could be some new charge points to the market that are built really, really well, and there's probably some charge points that I've not even looked at yet that could be built really well, but just consider what you're buying, make sure it's built well, make sure it looks like it's a, you know, a robust unit. If I could go back in the past and tell my earlier self that I didn't need an untethered charge point and that had nothing to do with future proofing and it had nothing to do with looking neater on the wall, I'd go back and tell myself not to get an untethered charge point, which is why as soon as I had the opportunity of ripping out an untethered charge point that I had, put your tethered point in, I did. And the reason is, in the middle of November, when it's chucking down with rain and the wind is blowing sideways, the last thing you want to do is go in your boot that's full of all the stuff that you've got in there, or get your cable out of the bag, unwrap it all, plug it in, and then at the end of the day, when it's still raining, put it, put the cable away, wrap it all back, and put that soggy wet cable back in your boot, back in your cable bag. You don't. You just want to grab the cable off your wall and plug it in. Now, bear in mind that these charge point companies and charge points are relatively new tech. In fact, some of the companies haven't been around for much more than five, six years. So bear in mind that when you get these, that the tech may have outgrown, may have changed. Try and buy a company that keeps their old charge points and firmware updated and supported. And that way in five, six, seven years, if your charge point is still working, because it's a decent one, that your app still works, your, your all your services in the background still work. And that's really important. One company very recently went bust, luckily got bought out. Find out what happened to them in this video right here.